All right, welcome back to my channel, guys. That song never gets old. I don't know. I just I discovered that song on this this app. It's like a free licensed song that I found like uh, a couple years ago, four years ago, and I just I'm, I'm I'm hooked. I don't know why I picked it. I I don't know why I I picked a hillbilly sounding song when I'm from New York City. I don't know. It just made sense to me, and I and I and I picked that long before I was on the right side of politics. This is when I was a uh, a global traveler, you know, you think you'd pick something like a cool sounding song. I pick some banjo hillbilly shit. Anyway, I decided to call this stream uh, uh, destructive baseball size hail because I uh, just got a notification on my phone. I thought it was an Amber Alert. You know, those Amber Alerts guys, like when, when a child's missing, your phone starts to go, everyone's phone goes off at the same time. I just got this message on my phone. I don't know if you guys could see it. Let me see if it comes up. Whoops. Well, I'll read it to you. It says, uh, emergency alert. National Weather Service. Severe thunderstorm warning in effect for this area until 6.45 p.m. For destructive baseball-sized hail. Take shelter in a sturdy building away from windows. People and animals outdoors will be severely injured. Yo, what the hell is that? So I'm like sitting here inside my little room here waiting for the hail to come outside. And uh, I guess I can't take my dogs for a walk or I can't go to the dog park or I can't really do anything outside right now. So figured I'd hop on with you guys and uh, just go over to <laughs> – I, Car- I see what Carlos said. What a liberal can- – yeah, exactly – uh, figured I'd just hop on YouTube for a little bit right now and uh, just go over some news stories, kind of sort things out with you guys today. Uh, as always, there's some news stories going on that I think are, are worth talking about. And I want to start, of course, with uh, the Ukraine-Russia situation because uh, I just I don't know what the, what the fuck's going on. That's just the bottom line. I really I don't know what's going on with, with Ukraine and Russia. Um I, I've been seeing I've been seeing more and more right wingers coming out in support of Putin. I've been seeing more and more people getting banned from TikTok and social media for taking a pro Russia stance. And I I just keep seeing more and more pro Ukraine content on mainstream media, which leads me to believe that there's an agenda here at play. Now I am not pro Russia. I want to be very clear to my audience right now. I am not pro Russia. Uh, I'm also not pro Ukraine. I am, however, pro-Ukrainian people, right? Because from my understanding, the Ukrainian people are being uh, attacked right now and they're being they're being hurt. Uh, I, I don't know whether it's by Russia or by Ukraine or by both. Uh, to me, I just have no freaking idea. And honestly, I don't know if anyone here knows either because there's so much misinformation out there online. Uh, I, I can't make sense of it. So that's why I'm not really going to be opining too much on it. Uh, some people are saying that Putin's a hero. I'm like, all right, let's calm down with that. Uh, one of my friends, Pete, he was going on. I don't know if he's watching right now, but he was going off on TikTok about how he stands with Putin. And I'm like, that's a that's a bold statement to make. I stand with Putin, especially when his country is the aggressor attacking Ukraine. But apparently there are people that believe that Putin is fighting against the new world order. Order I, Again, I, I don't know. I have no freaking idea. So I'm not really going to pine too much on that. But I did see this news story today, and it definitely is uh, pretty heartbreaking stuff. And uh, so apparently there is a theater. Where's the theater at? They changed the article already. All right. Well, it's on the homepage right here. There's this theater right here. You guys see this theater picture? Uh, Apparently there were people huddled in the Maripol Theater. Hundreds were sheltering in place. And uh, they even went so far as writing the word children outside the building. So you could see in this satellite image, they have the word children uh, by the school or the theater, hoping to probably tell the bombers or the people in the air, this building has children in it, please don't attack it. And uh, it was still bombed, allegedly. And uh, a lot of kids were killed. So uh, according to Zelensky, at least 103 children killed in Ukraine so far. Uh, that's, this is, this is like, this is why I'm against war. This right here, you know, soldiers, of course, sign up for war. Soldiers sign up to take the risk of war. It's one of the reasons why I never signed up for war. My dad is a Vietnam war veteran. 
Uh, so he's a bigger man than I'll ever be in my lifetime. I'm just a digital internet warrior, right? But this is the problem with war are the innocent bystanders and the people that did not, did not ask or volunteer to be part of it that become victims. And so my heart goes out to uh, every soul lost, every child lost. And uh, this kind of stuff just tears apart family and destroys families for generations to come. And it also... You think about it, like the butterfly effect, you know, if a butterfly flaps its wings or something and changes the course of history, this literally changes the course of history. I need coffee, guys. Holy shit. I woke up early today and I'm not used to waking up early. I'm used to waking up at like two o'clock. I woke up today at like 10 a.m. So it's been a long day for me already. I already went to the gym. I'm feeling good right now. But anyway, uh, this is literally changing history because these children that are being killed they're not going to go on to have families and they're not going to go on to procreate and those people aren't going to go on to create children. So this is killing generations and lineages of people that are no longer going to exist. All these kids had hopes and dreams ahead of them. So uh, to me, this is the horrors of war and uh, my heart goes out to the Ukrainian children. Um, Nuruk Lopez says, uh, we must remember that this man was an actor. Yeah, I know he would. Yeah, he definitely was an actor. Uh, look, we, we got a lot of celebrities that become politicians with Trump being, uh, you know, obviously one of those. He's a real reality TV star. And then I think it was, was it Reagan? He was also the uh, the celebrity. We had Schwarzenegger. Uh, I think The Rock one day is probably going to be president. Uh, maybe Tom Brady. So you have these people here that, that just build up fame and wealth. And then they, uh, you know, they have fame so they can eventually run. So it makes sense to me. Kate Africa said, uh, if you know, if you question anything about the narrative, you're a Putin apologist. Right. I mean, I'm not. All, all I'm saying is like there's so much misinformation out here that I just have no clue what to make sense of it. I'm just like, I, I don't know. Everything seems to be pro-Ukraine. Everything is anti-Russia. And all the people that are pro-Ukraine are the people I don't trust and I don't like, like the mainstream media. You know what I'm saying? So I just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm hoping that eventually the truth comes out of what's really going on. Uh, you know, Russia did some sanctions on us and um, they sanctioned Hillary Clinton for some reason. It's really weird. It's really weird. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Sizzy Silva says, do you think we should do what he's asking for? Are you talking about Putin or Zelensky? Which, uh, who are you talking about? Because I, I, I was, um, if you want to drop a link in the comments, I'll open it up and uh, we can look at it together right now if you want. Uh, thank you for the hat. I have a lot of hats here, guys. This is, uh, this is my other hat. I got this one too. I got my Let's Go Brandon hat. Hell yeah. And then, of course, I got the uh, the classic Make America Great Again. This hat triggers the liberals like no other. I got my branded hat with my name on it, Adam Francisco. I got my custom hat, one in the world. Let's go, Brandon. I also got my uh, Border Patrol hat, which is meant to speak on behalf of the border, with how we have to have strong borders. I also have my custom hat that I made. God bless Trump. And then I have my Trump 2024 hat, which I'll wear right now. I'll put that one on, Trump 2024. So I have a lot of uh, pro-Trump hats with me right now in my room. And I wear them, you know, seven days a week, all the time when I'm in public. Uh, I don't care anymore. Like, I, I, I wear them out because, uh, number one, I can. <laughs> uh, and number two, I'm trying to shift perceptions about who the Trump supporter is, you know. The, the mainstream media will have you believe that all Trump supporters are white people, white supremacists, neo-Nazis. It's complete bullshit. Uh, Trump supporters are very diverse, as diverse as Democrats are. Um, we have a lot of work to do, of course. You know, we have black Trump supporters. Unfortunately, they're only about 15 percent of the black population. But we're diverse. Like we still do have black people that vote for, for Trump, uh, people that have been red pilled and awakened. So 
Uh, I live in Florida, but I'm in Orlando, so I'm in a blue area in a red state. But I'm surrounded by lips here. Epic Paul's got the Make America Great, uh, Make America Great Again masks. Yeah, I don't even own a mask anymore. I will not frequent any business that requires a mask at all. Uh, I won't. I won't even go to an Uber with a mask on anymore. Like I just don't wear. I'm that's. I'm done. I'm done, and uh, I'm happy to see that. It looks like Rand Paul is trying to pass through some legislation to end the mask minutes on airplanes. So I really, guys, I really do think by the end of this year, the whole world is going to open up again. Um, you know, my only fear is after the midterms, maybe the Democrats are going to bring back the mandates. You know, one one argument that everybody always brings against against us is that, uh, you know, it isn't just uh, the Democrats in America that are doing lockdowns. The whole world is doing lockdowns. You got to understand, though, that a lot of countries follow the leader. They follow they follow the leader. That's what they do. So when they see the U.S. is doing something, they go, oh, we should do that, too. So when the U.S., drops mandates they drop mandates although in this case london was england was way before we did which is crazy um but i really do think that a lot of the world does lean on what the u.s does and i do think because we are the number one country in the world in terms of like gdp and power and all that stuff uh we have a lot of a lot of influence and anyone who says otherwise is i just think misinformed uh so what happens in the u.s does matter and it does uh, affect us on a uh, global level Let's talk about TikTok, guys. Um, you guys know I love and hate TikTok. I have a love-hate relationship with TikTok. And uh, right now, I've rebuilt my account. I got shadow banned. I got nuked at 50,000 subscribers about three months ago, two months ago. And now I'm back up to 34,000. So I've been able to rebuild pretty quickly, which is great. But there's always that risk of being thrown off again. Uh, I know many people that have been thrown off of TikTok in the last couple of weeks. One of them is my friend, Conservative Mish. She had an account of 102,000 followers, but she put up a post that was apparently too pro-Russia sounding. And so uh, TikTok nuked her account. So now if you are pro-Russia, uh, you'll get nuked. Just be aware of that. So she's gone. She's rebuilding. And uh, let me tell you something. It hurts, man. And I don't think people realize, like, there, there, there are people that use TikTok that do dance videos and they'll never get thrown off because that's the purpose of the app. They want people dancing and making fools of themselves. So if you if you do that kind of content, like you're immune from this, like you'll always have an account. Good for you, right? But if you're making content that actually matters, and again, if you're doing a dancing TikTok, it matters in that you're entertaining people, you're bringing smiles, you're creating joy. So let me give credit to that. But if you're creating content that's about serious issues, such as politics, uh, and you're on the right side, like you're always going to be at risk and you have to always act like you're in a minefield or that you're in like a, like a, a room full of lasers and you have to constantly navigate and what can I post? What can I not post? It's really frustrating. And here's the, here's the crazy part. If you're somebody like me who is trying to make a living off of being a political blogger or giving your opinions, uh, one of the biggest currencies that we have is our follower count, our voice, our ability to influence people, to tell them, hey, go to my YouTube, subscribe, join my page, donate to my Patreon. So when you take someone's 50,000 channel and you just cut them off, you literally are taking someone's vocal cords and you're saying, go fuck yourself. That's what they're doing, these, these, these companies. They are they are literally destroying our livelihood. They're destroying what we've worked for. You know, I, if I was not banned on TikTok, I would probably have 100,000 subscribers right now because it snowballs. And if I had that many subscribers, I would have more YouTube viewers. I would have more Patreon viewers. I would have more Super Chats. So it all snowballs and comes together. And when they do this, they're just literally cutting your livelihood. So it's really scary kind of where we're headed. And... Uh, the fact that, that that the left actually approves of these kind of methods, they're actually cheering on the U.S. becoming China 2.0. And that to me is so terrifying. Like, you know, we're, we're talking about sanctions and, you know, how, how, how banks and how 
Amex and crypto and Amazon and McDonald's. Everyone's like, we're going to cancel Russia. We're going to cancel Russia. Yo, don't you guys realize that if they can cancel countries, they can cancel people. Like, don't you guys get it? And now they have this tennis player, the number one tennis player in the world. Uh, he's been threatened that unless he comes out and publicly says that he's anti-Putin, uh, he's not allowed to compete in this next tournament. So he has to come out and he has to say that Putin is bad. Otherwise, he can't play. Do you see how scary this is? That they're basically saying, get on our, get on the path, get on the narrative, or you're canceled. Like, we're becoming China and, 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 and communist by allowing this to happen in our country. I don't think someone should be canceled if they're pro-Russia. If they're pro-Russia, it's like, let me hear you out. Let me see your evidence. And then I'll give you my evidence. And then I'll give you what I know. But the fact that we're just like, wait, what? You're defending Putin? You're pro-Russia? You're dead. That's so scary. Because today it's Russia. Last year it was vaccines. The year before it was masks. The year before it was Black Lives Matter and George Floyd. It's always going to be something that the party and the establishment wants you to think. And if you don't think that way, they're going to throw you off. It's crazy. So I know that it might, you know, some of you might think it's bad to be pro-Russia. Some of you might think it's bad to be pro-Ukraine. It doesn't matter, like, what side is correct or wrong or which side is more or immoral. The point is, we live in the USA where you're supposed to have free speech and free thought. And they're trying to control us. And that's, that's so scary. So, yeah, TikTok is a uh, is a Chinese run app, and uh, it looks like we're kind of pushing Russia and China closer together as friends, uh, just because of what's going on. And 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 tell me if I'm wrong or not. Um, you know, obviously, I'm I'm pretty new at you know. You guys might not think so, but I'm pretty new at this whole political thing. I, I don't really know much about Ukraine and and Crimea and Russia. Uh, I really don't know much about that stuff. But from my understanding, we're buying oil from Russia, right? We're buying gas from Russia. And Russia can use that money to fund the, their side of the war, right? But then today, Biden is sending $800 million to Ukraine. So we're buying Russian oil or we're buying Russian oil funding the Russian side of the war. And then we're giving Ukraine $800 million to fund their side of the war. So we're basically funding both sides of this war. Is that, is that, am I, am I reading that correctly? Am I getting the basic gist of what's going on here? That the U S is just funding both sides. I feel like they are. And to me, that's freaking crazy. That is absolutely nuts that, that we do this. Here it is right here, guys. According to the White House, $800 million security assistance will provide Ukraine with 800 Stinger anti-aircraft systems, 100 drones, 20 million rounds of small arms ammunition, grenade launcher and mortar rounds, 25,000 sets of body armor, 25,000 helmets, 100 grenade launchers, 5,000 rifles, 1,000 pistols, 400 machine guns, 400 shotguns, as well as 2,000 javelins. One th javelins? The fuck? 1,000 light armor weapons and 6,000 AT4 anti-armor systems. The assistance stops short of the no-fly zone or fighter jets that Zelensky has said are necessary to sustain Ukraine's fight against Russia. So, like, we're, we're basically funding both sides of this war, if you think about that. And uh, that just seems really silly to me. Like, uh, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. What we should have done is just started producing as much gas and oil as we could in the U S and not leaned on uh, international countries and uh, just gone back to energy independence, net positive, like we did under Trump and not this clown world shit that we're doing under, uh, under Mr. Joe Biden. It's kind of, it's kind of crazy. So uh, that's, that's my read on what's going on. We're funding both sides of the war. And uh, I don't think that's good. I think that that's, that's really silly. Joe Biden calls Vladimir Putin a war criminal today in outburst to reporters. And I got I to gotta say, though, that if you're bombing a movie theater 
that has the word children outside to tell you that there's children inside, to me, that is a war criminal act, in my opinion. I mean, I don't know how you couldn't see it that way. So, I don't know. Does to me looks really bad. And uh, here, here's the article uh, that says the no- world's number one ranked player, Daniil Medvedev, told he cannot, he cannot play Wimbledon unless he denounces Putin. So this guy right here, a Russian citizen, must denounce his, his own president in order to be allowed to play in a sport. That's crazy to me. It's like, it's like crazy that you're not even allowed to stay neutral. Like some people, they don't want to get political, right? Like a lot of celebrities, they don't want to get political. Most people that you know on Facebook probably don't get political. Most people do have a political opinion or they lean a certain way, left or right. But a majority of people are not comfortable speaking out about the way they the way they go because they're scared of being canceled or shunning or being an outcast. You know, when I was on Facebook uh, pre political Adam, before I was a political, uh, you know, political thinking guy, you know, my posts were probably about traveling, food, dogs, and dating. And my posts would typically get anywhere between 50 to 100 likes every post. They'd be like, here's a picture of my dog, 100 likes. Here's a picture of a nice meal I'm eating, 100 likes. Here's a picture of me in Cambodia, 100 likes. So, now that I'm a political YouTuber, I have alienated, if you want to call it that, about probably 70% of my Facebook audience simply because I'm from New York City. I lived in L.A. Uh, so most of those people are liberals. The international audience of mine from Thailand and Vietnam and all that stuff in Mexico, they don't really give a shit too much about politics. Mexico a little bit because they hate Trump because of the mainstream media that happens over there. But most international people, they're not as invested in this world as we are. So I've alienated 70% of my Facebook audience. Um, and then I'm shadow banned because of my misinformation. So now I, I'm lucky to get like five five to 10 likes on a photo. It's crazy. I'm down. Like my engagement on my personal Facebook is, is 10% of what it used to be. Usually it's the other way around. You get more engagement as you go on because it snowballs. But not me. Not when you're a right-wing thinker. Uh, but my point is a lot of people don't get involved in politics or mention it because they don't want to have these problems. They want to just live a simple life. And I totally respect that decision. Although in these times, I really don't respect someone for not speaking up. I think that if you don't speak up, you're a punk ass jerk. Let's just put it that way. I'm trying to find the right words to be nicely. I think it is a moral obligation to speak up uh, in these times, especially after what our governments have tried to pull on us over the last couple of years. And I'm talking about speaking up peacefully and patriotically, by the way, guys. Anti-violence. Anti-violence. Um, so to me, it's like you got this tennis player here. And maybe this guy doesn't want to – maybe he is pro-Russia. Maybe he, he supports Putin. But he doesn't want to say anything because he knows he could cancel it. So it, in his interest, his best move would be to stay silent. Or maybe he is anti-Putin. But if he says that it is anti-Russia, then he's going to alienate a lot of his Russian fans that are pro-Russia. So what's the best thing for him to do as an athlete? Just say nothing. That would probably be his best move is just say nothing. But unfortunately, he can't do that. They're basically telling this dude, you either speak up and say what we want you to say, or you're canceled. What the hell is that? What kind of world are we living in? That's so scary that they're trying to control what you say and what you do is bullshit. Noah Bailey says, uh, Noah Body says, if it were me giving my opinion as to what's going on in that region, I would say, I don't know. I can't believe mainstream and social media, so I have to rely on boots on ground. Exactly. We're in an, we're in an information war. But the, the fact is, they're not allowing him to say that. They're basically telling him that he must, he must condemn Putin or he cannot play the sport in which he's ranked number one. That's crazy to me. That's absolutely nuts. I don't get it. I'm just checking out my, uh, my Instagram guys. I have a friend. I don't know if he's watching right now, but he's, He's become pro-Putin. 
And uh, his theory is that it's about the Great Reset and Putin is fighting back. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, but again, I'm not going to cancel my friends for thinking that. Like, I'm not going to be like, how dare you have that thought? I'm just going to be like, yo, send me what, send me what is shaping your views and let me check it out for myself. But the bottom line is 90% of the shit we're seeing on the internet right now is fake news. So even if you send me stuff, I have no idea what to make of it anymore. I have no idea. I have no idea what to make of it. You know, even with the, uh, even with the <coughs> stuff and even with that stuff the whole time, you know, a lot of it is a guessing game the entire time. You know, you get information coming out from the CDC, from the WHO, from, from the FDA, but ultimately we know what's going on behind the scenes. There are people that work for Pfizer that work for FDA, people that work for who that work for AstraZeneca, people that work for Moderna, that work for CDC. So we know that there's a lot of handshaking and backroom deals going on. So even when you give me a trusted source, I, I'm just like, I don't, I don't fucking know. So if I can't even trust that, how can I trust anything that's coming out? I can't. So most of it has been going with my gut feeling, with my gut feeling. But, you know, I, 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 I read the data that's coming out about the, uh, the, the Pfizer trials and all that stuff. There's a document that explains how Pfizer did their trials and the mistakes they made. One of the mistakes they made was eliminating the control group very early on. So there was no control and exposed. It's just everyone became exposed. And uh, when, I, when, I, when I learned that and I, knew, and, I, and I found out that that was legit real information, that's when I was like, yo, I, I, I'm pretty confident that I'm on the right side here of personally saying no to this, whatever you want to call it. I had that convinced me that I was like, I know that I'm on the right side of history here. And guess what? I don't have to live with any concerns of being a ticking time bomb. Like other people have to, uh, you know, there's a lot of mysterious shit going on in the news. You guys see it. A lot of mysterious shit going on in the news when it comes to people's health. And uh, I'm just thankful that I don't have to really worry about that. Now, maybe, Maybe there are going to be some long-term effects from the, <laughs> and not the, I haven't had any that I know of, but who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe there, maybe, maybe the, the, the disease did cause micro damage in my body. Maybe it's going to, you know, reveal itself in a couple of years. I have no freaking idea. All I know is I am doing the best I can to maintain my health, you know, going to the gym, keeping my body fat down to, uh, you know, I'm around 14% right now. I'm trying to get down to 13%, but this last 1% is tough, especially because I'm nursing a uh, uh, leg injury right now. So that's been that hurt. That's been hurting my running abilities. Um, and you know, you need to do cardio. You got to add a little bit of cardio if you're really going to try to lose weight. But uh, my abs are starting to poke through a little bit. You know, my abs are starting to come out. So I know that my my health is doing okay. Here, don't judge. We're, let's 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 get a little weird. Let's get a little weird, guys. Anyway, there's some abs there. You can't see it because of the lighting, but I got some abs coming through. And uh, you know, as long as I can see my abs, I know I'm on the right track here in terms of my personal health. Uh, I like to be shredded more for summertime coming up, um, especially as I think Philippines is going to open by end of this year. And you know, I'm just I'm just waiting to get back out to Southeast Asia. I'm just literally biding my time until Southeast Asia opens up to the unvaccinated people. <sighs> Just because, uh, yeah, I, I, I want to start moving forward with, with the family thing. And so I, I need to get to that dating pool in order to potentially find a partner because this Western dating style is just not for me anymore. These uh, Feminism has destroyed dating in America. Destroyed it. Oh, boy. OnlyFans has destroyed it. And the thing is, even if you're willing to sugar baby a woman, even if you're willing to, to spend money to get what you want here in the U.S., the market is so expensive here compared to anywhere else in the world when you go develop a country. So even if you're going to choose that lane for yourself and, you know, a girl in America is like, I'll go out with you, but I need cash for my time. Then it's like, you're going to be spending 500 bucks. The hell screw that. That's crazy. That's a lot of money. Unless you're like making a million dollars a year. It's unreal. So it's like, I've just, the dating game has changed so much in the past couple of years and COVID's really destroyed it now. It's really, unfortunately, most women are liberals. Most women are liberals. That's the reality. 
uh, majority of women are liberals. So most liberals are not tolerant. So when a liberal woman finds out you're a Trump supporter or that you're a political YouTuber, you're done, you're out. The crazy part is liberal women are more likely to be open to non-monogamy, hookup culture, all that stuff. Whereas conservative women or Trump supporting women typically want relationships. They're Christian. They're religious. So I've really created a, a little, uh, what can I say? I put myself in a corner here, right? Because I, I turn off the liberal woman, but then I also am not traditional at all for the conser conservative woman. So really my best bet is foreign women. That's just the reality of the situation at this point in my life. Because if I go date a girl from Colombia or Philippines or Vietnam, they don't give a shit about American politics. They'll be like, what's your job? Oh, political YouTuber. Oh, that sounds cool. Do they care? No. All they care about is, do I have enough money to provide? That's all they care about. And, uh, you know, I do have crypto. I have, I have a nice amount of crypto. I don't want to spend it when I'm in the U.S., but it's getting it's getting tight because of Joe Biden's economy, the inflation, the, the costs going up. So to me, the best way to do would just be go to Philippines or Thailand and then I don't have to worry about money because uh, my money will grow faster than I can spend. And so I need to get back there at some point. Hip hop of the meaning says, Adam, I have this chick from Ecuador message me, was in Miami and I always say, hey, baby and shit and say I like you and all this shit. But anytime I try to have a convo, she ghosts or barely responds. Uh, is she playing games or what? No, she's probably she probably wants the, the sugar mama lifestyle. She probably wants you to sugar baby her or spoil her, as these girls like to call it. Uh, and until you make a cash offer, she's just going to keep teasing you and teasing you and teasing you because, you know, you got to think about it. How, how long does it take to message, to message somebody? It takes 10 seconds. That's it. So she's probably messaging multiple guys at the same time, and she's probably getting a, a, a payment across the world from, from different men. So... Uh, unless you're willing to throw cash down, I wouldn't engage with her further. Uh, I just would leave it as it is. But you got to understand something like the idea of sugar babies is very common internationally, right? When you when you go to Thailand, for example, you're going to be down well, almost always paying cash for sex. That's just it is what it is. That is that is just the reality and the nature of of the country of just the way that the dating scene is set up. Uh, you know, Vietnam to a lesser degree, but still very prevalent that ultimately the, the, these women expect you to, to, to fund their lifestyle because you're American and you got dollars and they have bot or they have the Vietnamese dong, for example. So these these foreign women, the, be the beauty is they are more traditional. The, the beauty is you can date hotter women when you go internationally because you become more desirable as an American man. But the negative thing is you're also going to be expected to fund the lifestyle and uh and, and and lead and and just you know be that you know they're going to make you more masculine that's that's what it is so you kind of gotta you know pick the lane that you want to be in and uh i'm okay being in that lane because the prices in philippines or thailand are so cheap you know if i have to pay for my girlfriend's every meal in thailand or philippines that's like 10 bucks a day <laughs> You know, we can go out and get some delicious street food for a dollar a meal. I'll pay for that every freaking day. I don't give a shit. Or if I have to pay for, uh, you know, the hotel room every time, I don't give a shit. That's so cheap. I can't fly in Thailand because of my dogs. They're not allowed dogs on planes, even if they're service dogs. So for me, I would take the train. I'll pay for the train ticket. I don't give a shit. No problem. I'll rent the car. No problem. So, you know, you, you have to understand that that's kind of a uh, train. As Noah Body says, on a positive, you can trade up off. Exactly. Like the effort it takes to date a seven in America is the same effort to date a, like an eight and a half, nine in Thailand or in Vietnam. That's the reality. So you can work, you can put in less effort and get better results. She was like, I'm going to call you after I sent a voice message. We were voice messaging back and forth. And then I was like, all right, cool. Respond back. Or call me whenever and then no response. Yeah, bro. She's playing games. Yeah. Why don't you send me her uh, Instagram and I'll look at her page and I'll tell you what's going on with her page. What about that Asian chick on your channel? She's based. Are you talking about Tara? Tara Shapansky for the Polish American Brotherhood? Now, nah, Tara and me, she's like my bestie. Like, she's my bestie. Like, I couldn't... Uh, yeah, that's that, that, that. She, and plus, she's got a boyfriend too, but she's like my bestie. 
we are like super hardcore friend zones, me and uh, Tara, Tara and I. And, uh, you know, she's, she's, she's a great girl. I'm very close with her family. Her family likes me, I think. Um, but no, no, Tara and I don't have that kind of a uh, relationship. We've joked around though. If, if life doesn't work out, we joked around that if life doesn't work out, we could co-parent together eventually. But, uh, you know, I, I had my sights set on, you know, a, 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 a someone in the Philippines in their twenties, you know, I, I, I would like to try the effort of some sort of mother father relationship for my child, some sort of traditional relationship. You know, I, I, I would kind of like to try that, you know, and uh, I, w I would like to potentially have a, of a girl that's absolutely gorgeous and arm candy, you know, and just a sweet girl and, you know, embraces what I do on YouTube and actually wants to also be on the channel as well. And uh, I could also do travel vlogging while I'm in Philippines and then do political commentary at the same time. That to me would be awesome. And then I could do videos with, with my, you know, like dad, become a dad vlogger. You know, I'm down for that. But, uh, you know, me and Tara, nope, just just friends. And uh, that will not be happening. Let's see what's going on on New York Post, guys. Let's just uh, hop around the Internet on some good websites. New York Post is a great one. They always have great articles going on. Let's see. Homepage. Sex cult monster. What the hell is this? Disturbing videos show accused sex cult Abuser Larry Ray tackling, pinning victims. That's strange. Court order, court orders Jesse Smollett released from jail during appeal. DNC forced to clean up Paris's Ukraine tweet gaffe. What did she say? Kamala Harris tweet mistakenly suggests Ukraine is part of NATO. Isn't that the thing that Ukraine is trying to get into NATO? God, she's so. When I was in Poland, I met with the U.S. and Polish service members, thanking them for standing with our NATO allies for freedom, and peace, and security. The United States stands firmly with the Ukrainian people and in defense of the NATO alliance. And then, of course, they had to come in and clean up. Islander says, I am sounding like a cheapskate. I, I don't know what that means. What, what did I say that makes me sound like a cheapskate? The fact that I want to live in a country like Philippines or Thailand and never have to think about money or work another day in my life so I could spend all the time in the world with my family. Like, I, I, I don't... I mean, that's, that's, that's my perspective. I don't want to be a cog in, uh, you know in the capitalist system where I'm just constantly having to work and chase to, to, to maintain a certain lifestyle. You know, I, I want to be able to get a massage every day and in Thailand at $6 an hour. I can afford that. The other funny thing, Adam, was she kept sending me one word response. So I didn't respond one time. Cause I was like, all right, F this. And then she was like, why don't you respond? Yo, send me her name on Instagram. Send me her name on Instagram, bro. I want to go check out her page. Don't worry. I won't slide into her DMs. You can trust me. Cody, send it to me now. I won't show I won't show her name on the on the YouTube. I'm just going to look at it here, and I'll give you an honest opinion on her through through here. I won't face this towards this. Oh, here. He just gave it to me. All right. Let's see. Here we go, guys. I'm looking at – oh, Okay. Yeah, I can mess with this. Okay. So in his defense, she's an attractive girl. Probably liberal. She's got a she's got a little uh lip piercing right here. I love facial piercings on girls. I think it's sexy as hell. Yeah, she has, bro, she hasn't posted since 2018. But she's got stories, apparently. Oh, yeah, she's aging well. She's got tattoos. She's got a sleeve. And she lives in Miami. Miami. 
Bro, she's very attractive. But yeah, it's a weird page. Like, not that active. Bro, I would. I don't know if I'd waste time on her. Her name. I'm gonna look her name on Facebook for you. Let's see if we could find her. All right. She has a Facebook with no profile picture. Yeah, I found her. She did post on January 12th on Facebook. She's got some photos. She lives in Ecuador. She lives in Ecuador right now. I, I, maybe she's waiting for you to, you know, because does she have a visa, a green card? Maybe she, she had, maybe she wants to get married and get a group. Maybe she wants you to offer that to her. But you got to be careful with that shit, man, because uh, you get caught by the federal government. If it's not a legit marriage, you're screwed. But you're allowed to marry someone from a different country. You're allowed to do that. Yeah, she's definitely attractive, man. But uh, if she's if she's giving you these weird ghost vibes, then I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't really engage too too much further with her, or just put spit it out there, like just put it out all the cards on the table for her. You know, be like either we're gonna talk so I can figure out what's going on, or I just gotta cut this off and move on. But she won't care. That's the thing; she won't care because she's probably talking to a lot of different dudes at the same time. So. You got to choose which lane you want to be in. And I bet if you offer to fund her lifestyle, she will respond to you and she will probably make plans to see you. So there, apparently there's this, uh, there's this TV show on Netflix called like brand new cherry flavor. Have you guys heard about this? And there's like this weird sex scene apparently in the show. That involves like like kittens coming out of a person or something. Have you guys heard about this? I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to uh, watch right now with you guys. I don't know if I could do that, but let me try to let me try to log into my uh, to my. I don't have Netflix anymore. I mean, I I do. Kind of. Hold on. Hope you guys can't see my screen right now. Good. Okay. Let's see. Am I in? Oh, yeah, I'm in. All right. Brand new cherry flavor is the name of the show. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to uh, stream anything from. uh, I'm pretty sure I can't. Okay, play episode. I think it's episode four, minute 35. Let's see if I can get to this episode real quick. Brand new cherry flavor. How do I get episode four? Okay. I don't know if I should play this on YouTube. Apparently it's the, oh yeah, I can't play this on YouTube. Yeah, I can't play it on YouTube. It's like an actual sex scene. But uh I am it's a it's a trend now on TikTok, people reacting to the scene, which I'm gonna do right now. After I get off of this live stream, I'm gonna do a, a video reacting to the scene. And uh, if you guys want to watch that, go to my TikTok, Adam Francisco TikTok 2, and you will see the content over there. But in the meantime, guys, my uh, uh I'm gonna be filming a part three of the gas station video, uh, begging by the voters for gas money. Part three is gonna come out soon. I'm gonna start probably filming that tomorrow, the day after. And then I'm also working on another video where I uh, I'm gonna be print I print printing up a big sign and uh it says, Do you regret voting for Joe Biden? Let's talk. So hopefully I'll be able to uh, attract people that regret Biden vote, you know, Biden voters that have regret right now and get their opinion. So we'll see what happens there.
But anyway, guys, all right, I'm going to go watch this weird movie scene. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, sometime this week. Be free, my sheeple. I'll play the music for you guys to close out with.